All right. What is going on, Hot Pog High School community? We have another Wellness Wednesday session here with our guest and our comrade, Mr. James Gallagher. We also have our colleagues and close friends at this point, Annie Huang, Colleen Ruffini, Shannon Griffin, Joy Farrar, and Christy Paglieri. Uh, we have some exciting things to connect with you about today, but at the core of what we're trying to do is provide tools that can promote your own wellness. Um, you know, every day we talk a lot about our job here is to empower you to tell your own story personally, professionally, academically, and socially. Certainly this experience um, has, and this time away and the current kind of social climate has pushed us to think about our storytelling and the ways in which we want to tell our stories. And here's what I can promise you. We empower you to continue to search within yourself about the next steps you need to take as a human being to grow in the way that you see fit. Uh, so keep thinking about that, keep taking that lens. We're here to empower you to tell your stories. Um, without, that, with, without further ado though, let's get into the work of the day. Mr. Gallagher, welcome back and take it away. Thank you so much, Mr. Cook. It's good to be with you all again in our HOPOG community. Um, today, I'd just like to offer uh, some content around resilience and how we resource ourselves in complex times. I think it's undisputable that we're living in a time of a, of a pandemic and our lives are unfolding in a way that we could never have perceived in many ways. Um, so if, if you would, Mr. Cook, I'd just like to share those slides if possible. So we, just to start us off, I just wanna offer like a grounding definition of the term resilience and first have it set in the context of a substance or an object. So in this image, I have ground moss, a ground cover, just to begin to use a metaphor that moss itself is, is kind of designed to be impacted. And it's impacted, smushed if you will, but then has the ability to spring back into shape, spring back into health and wellness, frankly. You'll see as this next slide, we can apply this idea of, excuse me, is the prior one. Sorry, Mr. Cook, was that other bullet point? We can apply this idea of resilience to ourselves as human beings. And just as physical substances have the ability to bounce back into wellness and health, so do we as human beings. And this is our ability to bounce back from stress, from challenge, adversity, and even trauma. Um, but we really must do so with some intention. Uh, and it's not just simply pulling ourselves up um, after we get knocked down. So here's an offering around um, resources as a way to cultivate resilience. So what does that mean? I'm gonna offer three here and then drill down on this second one, interpersonal. So a resource for building resilience can be biological, meaning you may just be born to be slightly calmer, lower heart rate, um, not as easily triggered by events internally or externally. Then there are also things, regardless of our genetics, that we can do intrapersonally, meaning the connecting into what brings us alive, what brings us happy, or what brings us calm, ease, peace. There's also, of course, res resources that we get from social connection, our friends, our family. Um, but let's drill down on the intrapersonal and I'll just take us through some options on the next slide. So these are ways that we can generate resource and resilience intrapersonally for ourselves. So there are four categories, and I wanna to begin to signal you to think about, do any one of these categories resonate with you? Do you get resourced, a sense of aliveness, peace, calm, maybe from nature, just a walk, or even just looking out the window at trees or the breeze or the ocean. Maybe it's animals. That could be anything from a documentary about animals to your own pet. Your pet can be a resource, resource your dog, your cat. Creativity. That could both be listening to music, playing music, looking at art, creating art. And then lastly, we can intrapersonally connect with people, just bringing mentors, people we admire into our mind. There's an actual practice here for cultivating this. It's at the foundation as always is mindfulness. And that's just bringing 
your attention on purpose on things that bring you ease, well-being, and help regulate you. Here are our steps. And I've dropped a little plug for a book here. It's called Hardwiring Happiness. The hardwiring is a reference to the fascinating research that the hardwiring in our brains, when we have pleasant resourcing experiences, they become tools that we can use, both when we are overwhelmed with life and the world and what's going on inside and around us, and when we are content. There's value in practicing this resourcing um, regardless of what state you are in. Here are the steps. You can first have this resourcing experience, which could be a walk in nature, listening to music, spending time with your dog. Or if you don't have that resource at hand, you can simply just imagine it, like we're gonna do in this dedicated short practice. The key piece here is reinforcing it, in a sense, raising the volume of this experience so you truly let it wash all over you. Might sound a little hokey. Now that we've done a bit of the conceptual, let's move into the experiential for about three minutes, and then I'll offer a brief micro practice. So take about 10 seconds and just think about, what are my resources? Something in nature? Is it animals? A creative activity? Or maybe just people I like to bring to mind? So just 10 seconds or so. And once you have that resource to play with, let's see if we can hardwire it in to our minds. So this will be about two, two and a half minutes. You can lower your gaze, close your eyes completely, or feel free to leave them open. And just ground our attention maybe into our breath, sounds in the room. Let's just do an experience of this resourcing practice. Bring the image of that resource to mind. A favorite tree, walk on the beach, walk with a dog, snuggling with cat. Maybe it's drawing, painting, journaling. And just kind of rest in that resource a bit, meaning letting your attention focus on that resource. And the hardwiring comes into by raising this volume. So see, as you have this resource in mind, can you feel physical sensations in your body? Thinking of the cuddly dog, maybe the ocean breeze, on your skin, moving through your hair. Really try and take yourself there. And in a sense, you're packing your backpack with this experience. So it's there when you need it. Hardwiring it into your mind. So you can call on it maybe when you're feeling lost, frustrated, angry, or even when you're content. You can do this practice so that it's even more accessible when you need it most. And as we transition from this little experiment, hardwiring a resource for ease, happiness, or well-being, I'll just invite a soft bell when you no longer hear the bell, you can kind of raise your gaze, open your eyes, maybe bring a silly wiggle to your body. Thank you all, as always, just acknowledging the unique, potentially new experience we're having by experimenting with these practices. And if that didn't work for you, always completely okay. Let me offer just quickly a micro practice, something that can be done really just in the moment that can serve as a resource as well. And it's probably about two, two slides up forward, Mr. Cook, my apologies. Here it is, four words. We're living in complex times. We may hear something, see something, 
from the news, blog post, Facebook post, and it can stir us in a way emotionally. I offer you a wellness tip in four words with impact is not intention. What you read, what you perceive as being communicated maybe is not the intention of the speaker. I'm not making judgment as to whether it is right or wrong or whether it calls for action. I'm just offering something that could be a resource for you as we navigate the complexities we find ourselves in these days. Just that phrase, well, maybe the impact on me is not the intention of the speaker. Thank you so much. I'm always grateful for this time to be in learning with you, Hapog. Um, I will turn it over to Ms. Swamp. Thank you, James, for leading us through our micro practice today. As James brought up in today's practice, impact is not intention. This brings to mind one of my favorite quotes from Austrian psychologist, Victor E. Frankel. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. In this quote, Frankel asks us to pause for a moment before reacting. This is a powerful strategy in times of stress, especially when we've been stuck in our homes for such an extended period of time. Nerves are fraying and your loved one's patience have just about run out. Neuroscience has been informing the field of education for some time now. There's a large body of research that has uncovered significant correlations between routine stress or trauma and their impact on the growing brain and subsequently on learning. When our children are, in, are triggered or heightened state of fight, flight, or freeze, it is almost impossible for them to engage in any learning. Their inability to engage academically can often be misinterpreted as willful defiance or laziness, which then leads to adult frustration, anger, or disappointment. It is a loose-loose situation for everyone involved. On the macro level, as educators and parents, it is important for us to be cognizant of this relationship and reframe the way we approach education and the way we communicate with our children. On the micro level, we can individually work to pause and reframe our own mindset and perspectives so that we can remain curious about someone's behavior that irk or frustrate us and react in a way that is beneficial to all. To reframe our thinking, we can pause and bridge the gap between won't and can't yet. This changes our mindset from judgment to curiosity. Next, take the perspective of the other person. Instead of assuming the person is doing or saying something intentionally, reframe and consider that there may be other factors that are getting in the way of academic engagement or completing a desired task. Consider this. What are the stressors and how can we work together to reduce them? What are the unmet needs and how can we work together to meet them? What are the skill deficits and how can we learn or teach those skills? Next, consider our responses. In a fixed mindset, the most common response to problem behaviors or personal conflicts could mean that disciplinary action or other forms of punishment may be a result. In a growth mindset, we're curious about the obstacles that might be in the way and how we might remove them to improve performance or communication. By responding in this way, we will see internal experiences move from a negative place such as blame, guilt, shame, anger, or rejection to a positive place such, such as engagement, supportiveness, mutual respect, and gratitude. The byproduct is, a, is better communication between stakeholders and more opportunities for positive interactions. So the takeaway for today is kindness truly matters. When we see things differently, we do things differently. Be curious and ask questions. Thank you. And now I turn it over to Mrs. Ferrara. I think the thing that definitely um, I loved about what you just presented was, you know, the recognition that we have a lot more power than we often 
feel in situations. And I think sometimes we really need to be reminded of that, that if we can take those steps that are necessary, you know, I think very often what happens to many people is we're very, we respond, you know, we just react and we get controlled by the emotions that we're feeling and not, you know, I think in many cases, the aftermath of that can be a lot of guilt or, you know, problemed, um, more problems because we're not taking that time to be in that space and to really give some thought to how we want to proceed. So I kind of liked that it, it you know, that that was, that power was given to people. I think that that's an important tool. Thank you, Shannon. Does someone else have a question or something that they're wondering about? We had two very great conversations on resilience. Someone else. So I'm, I'm wondering um, if there's a way that we can message this out to our kids rather than just on the classroom, because I think, you know, there's 16, 17 days of school left. And I think some, you know, some people are not feeling as resilient as we know that they have the power to be. And I think they just need a little bit of hand holding across, you know, the last lap this last month um so if we can get this message to them like you're not there yet but you can get there um i sent similar messages to students this morning that are just so close and um you know the response i get from them was like immediate like oh thank you i'm gonna get right to it and i think just reaching out and knowing like we know that they can do it we know how hard it is but um you know we know that they have this also is just such a strong message and i really appreciate listening to what uh annie and james had to say today i think it would go a long way with our student our students that's great. Thank you, Christy. James, I'm wondering when you said the impact on me is not the intention of the speaker. I'm wondering if you can discuss that a little bit or unpack that a little bit further. Thinking about um, some of our past conversations and the emotions that we wear in the body, we felt certain emotions. And I'm wondering Absolutely. if you could speak to um, this particular quote a little bit deeper. Absolutely. I'm happy to and um, able to because of Dr. Hong's presentation. So I'd like to connect the two. Uh, so Dr. Hong emphasized two key pieces. One was a pause. Uh, that sounds like a small thing, but is incredibly powerful. And that pause can simply be a breath, just taking a breath after you see something in the news, see a post, or maybe uh, child's, your child said something to you that's triggering, or your parent says something to you that is triggering. So first is just the pause. The second is the word Dr. Hong shared with us around curiosity. Curiosity can be this beautifully resilient thing all on its own. So rather than getting caught in what was said, and perceiving and swimming in the impact on you, on your emotions, on your thoughts, on the physical sensations. You can find some space in that pause, get curious, literally, hmm. maybe the way I receive that comment, that nag, that post, that thing from the news, isn't really the full story. And just questioning through curiosity, is there a way for me to inquire, for me to explore, that actually first serves me as a self-management tool and may actually present an opportunity for learning and connection with the speaker or the writer. Um, so hopefully, Ms. Ferrara, that kind of answers the question a bit. I um, was moved by Dr. Hong's presentation, so I did want to kind of connect those two pieces uh, together. Thank you, James, yes. and. So the, my, my final question to the group um, is really, you know, Annie, uh, the quote you put put up between stimulus, you know, so as educated people and, and training our young people to respond to comments or situations, how do you um, kind of put you know, push the emotions down so that growth can really happen in response. 
And that's really to anybody in the group. I'm going to just quickly say I'm sorry to, to, to jump in. Um, so I, I want to just offer that it's not a pushing the emotions down, if I heard that correctly. Um, in the sequence of our work, we're first honoring those emotions. Okay. We are feeling them in our body. We are seeing what thoughts and emotions they produce. And we can do that in that same pause. Okay. All we're trying to do is break that pattern of reacting in the same old way we did. And maybe through a pause, we respond maybe the exact same way as we always have. But perhaps in that space with some curiosity, we respond a little bit differently. That's all this is. And, and I would just want to add, I think it's using those intrapersonal resources that James, you spoke about, just realizing, again, things can happen to us, but we have ourselves as resources to, to decide how to choose how we're going to respond. Perfect. Thank you, Colleen. I appreciate that. Um, I think that's all the time that we have. Uh, for our question round. So, uh, Chris, if there's anything that you would like to say to wrap up, I just want to thank Annie and, and James for a, a tremendous presentation today. I think it's really timely. Chris, over to you. Yeah, no, thank you, Joy and, and Annie and James for your pieces here today. Um, I think I've been feeling pretty wonderful about the Wednesdays and the time we have to come together, some of the pre-conversations we have and just some of the planning that has gone in and it really helps to center me. I, I hope people are enjoying this resource, um, but it is without having to talk a lot about what, what would be helpful to any of us and all of us coming from our own seats in the world and coming to this table, it's not hard for us to each connect around this issue. So I, these issues and these conversations. So I can only imagine the universal nature of all of this um, needs to be a part of our everyday conversation a whole lot more. So I'm very grateful for this space and this opportunity on a weekly, and we'll continue to move it forward. But James, if you want to take us home today and just kind of send us off with any kind of closing uh, moments here, and then we will uh, see you next week, everybody. Yes, um, I think we've kind of spent a, a sufficient time on on resilience. When we have longer time, we can connect into those resources. In the moment, we can do something as simple as impact is not intention. Um, why don't we actually just return to our three breaths practice for all of us on the call here, the Hot Pod leadership team and for the community. And then just that three breaths, breath one, just finding your breath. It's a resource in itself. Breath two, connecting into the body, been sitting a bit, legs are asleep back might be aching. And then lastly, I invite us all, ask ourselves the question, what's most important right now? Do I need to walk? Do I need to make a phone call? Do I need to journal? And use that as a wellness, as a self-care tool um, as we transition into our day. Beautiful. Thank you guys. Thank Another you. great one. Peace out, everybody. That was great. Thank you, James. I need